Good evening. So, as continuing from last week, as Father Stephen kind of mentioned in the beginning of the Mass last week, uh, this month, in the month of May, we're going to go over uh, the uh, Pope Francis' uh, letter uh, called Patris Corde with Father's Heart, uh, emphasizing right, the year of St. Joseph. And the, uh, the letter has seven different points on how St. Joseph kind of exhibits the heart of God the Father. And last week, uh, Father Stephen did the introduction and the first point. And so he kind of talked about Joseph as a protector. So today I'm going to talk about uh, the second point, uh, which is Joseph and having the tender and loving heart. And the fourth point, which is Joseph having the accepting heart. And there are several reasons why I chose these two points. First is, well, Father Stephen took the first one last week, so I couldn't, I couldn't do the first one, right? So I was uh, brought down to the second and fourth one. But also, these two points, the tender, loving heart and the accepting heart, uh, really reflects, I think, uh, the readings today, right? The first reading is about Cornelius, a Gentile, uh, who goes to Peter, who gets the calling from God, and who goes to Peter and receives the Holy Spirit and now is baptized. And he's a member of the church. He's a Christian now. And everybody, right, at that time, the early thought, right, to be a Christ, you had to, to be a Christian, you had to be a Jew, right, because it's an extension of the Jewish tradition. But it kind of showed that everybody's welcome. The most unlikely person, the, the centurion, was admitted to, to be a member of this church. And I thought that was kind of right, how accepting and loving and tender our faith is. And the second reading, right, in the letter of St. John, the famous God is love, right? And if we do not love, right, we actually don't know God because there's no God in us, right? The lack of love in our hearts reflects lack of God in our hearts. And in the gospel today, it kind of drives, that point is kind of driven home and more deeply, and it becomes a commandment, is it becomes a commandment of the Lord, that our Lord says, if you want my love to abide in you, and if you want to abide in me as I abide in you, you got to follow this commandment, which is to love one another as I have loved you. Right? And I think these three points kind of reflect uh, the second and fourth point of the letter. And another reason is, right, I think it, it's God is calling me uh, to really take on this heart, especially for my priesthood, uh, because... I've been reflecting and praying about it, and it's, it's all, almost going to be a year since my ordination, right? So it's almost going to be a year since I became a priest in June, so it's about a month off. And I was kind of reflecting upon my year, like how my year has been, my first year has been, and like, if I, I can't, I shouldn't lie, so, right? But it's been great, right? <laughs> right? It's been, it's been great. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, good answer, good answer. Uh, lately, uh, uh, very recently, best pastor, right? The best pastor. <laughs> right. Now. Very recently, uh, I think the Lord has been presenting people that has been really broken or lost. Right? They don't mm. know where to go. They had this huge burden on themselves, and they need someone to lessen that burden. And uh, they somehow get, come in contact with me, and we start talking, and I hear all of their wounds and hurts, and it kind of wrings my heart. It makes my heart sad. And another people that I've been getting confronted and the Lord has been presenting is difficult people, right? Uh, people who don't share the same idea as me, uh, people who have different beliefs than me, uh, people who want to tell me that I am wrong, kind of thing. And in all those cases, when I encounter them, uh, my immediate response is, how can I avoid them? Right, because I don't want to feel sad. I don't want to take on their problems. I don't want to get in arguments with them. I just want to have fun, you know, enjoy the priestly life, be with the people, right? But I think the Lord has been giving me this opportunity to reflect upon these two points, a tender, loving heart and accepting heart, because that's what a father would do. And people do call me father, right? And I think the Lord is saying, if you want to be a spiritual father to these people, you got to be a father to them to, as well. And this is how you become father to them, that you accept them 
with a loving and tender heart. And this is how St. Joseph exemplified a loving and tender heart, right? The, in the gospel today, the Lord gives us the commandment, love one another as I have loved you. And we might be asking, well, how do we do that? And going back to, again, Father Stephen's uh, homily last week about imitation, right? That St. Joseph, we should imitate St. Joseph. And I think if we do imitate St. Joseph, we will have this loving and tender heart. We will have this ac accepting heart. And to love, to, love, uh, to love one another as God the Father would have, as Joseph would have, means that you take them as who they are. I think that is the main point, right? That we often come, to, come here to church thinking that we have to show the best version of ourselves to the Father. Unless we're not, then we're not worthy, right? We have to be presentable. We have to be uh, ideal, right? We have all the standards that we have to keep up. Then we can approach God. Then he will be happy with us. But the document, and today in the kind of, in the reading says, right, it's, it's not because we're worthy that God loves us. It's that he has loved us first. He has chosen us first so we can approach him, right? And I think for us, right, it means that we have to approach him with humility, revealing to him all our wounds, all our weaknesses and our faults, along with our joys and gifts and greatnesses as well. And for us who want to imitate the Father, who want to imitate St. Joseph, it means that we have to be like the Father to those around us. Maybe our spouse, maybe our children, maybe our coworkers, right? maybe our family members have done something wrong to us. They haven't met our standard and they have inflicted wounds on us. They have hurt our feelings or our relationship has been severed because of something that they went through, because there's something that they have done. But the Lord today right, challenges all of us. Accept them. Love them with tender careness. Right? It is not their greatness that makes them lovable. It's their weaknesses that my heart goes out to them. So, right, just maybe throughout the day, maybe especially today as we continue to celebrate the Holy Eucharist, maybe we can reflect upon those people who have done wrong to us, who haven't met our standard. And Maybe we can ask the grace today for our hearts to go out to them, to pray for them sincerely for their own good, and that, they, that we may imitate the Father's heart and also they can receive the true and beautiful and authentic love of God in their life today.